All right, this video is gonna be covering uh, removing and replacing uh, defective slack adjuster. Uh, we're gonna go over how we came to the conclusion that the slack adjuster was bad, uh, show you how to test these things, and then we'll go over actually replacing the slack adjuster. All right, we'll start off with showing you how we tested it. Um, all right, so we were doing an inspection on this trailer and we noticed that the push rod travel was was excessive it was over the two and a half inches allowed for a long stroke brake chamber we know this is a long stroke brake chamber uh, because it has square ports instead of circle ports if they were round ports we know this was a short stroke or standard stroke brake chamber if it was a standard stroke brake chamber the maximum push rod travel when the brakes are applied is two inches but we have a long stroke brake chamber square ports here so we have an extra half inch that we can travel so two and a half inches maximum from released to applied so i'm going to show you how we uh, measure that we're going to take our tape measure put it inside the brake chamber bracket and bottom it out on the face of the brake chamber and then take a measurement to this center of the clevis pin all right and that's going to be 11 and a quarter all right so the 11 and a quarter is our released measurement and now we're going to get our applied measurement i got our remote control here i'm going to remotely apply our brake our service brakes Oh boy. All right, so it jumped from 11 and a quarter to about 14 and 3 eighths. So we have 3 and an eighth inches uh, that the brake traveled. Um, so a good 5 eighths of the inch over the, the maximum that it's allowed to travel. So we got an issue here. Um, we went and checked out the brake chamber, checked out the S-cam bushings, and you know, along with a little bit of wear, uh, everything looked pretty okay. So next thing we're gonna do is show you how we checked out the slack adjuster. Uh, before we do that, I'm gonna show you a the other side here, uh, at least the brake. All right. So this slack adjuster is the same one, and this one is working. You can see we get about the same thing, about 11 and an eighth, uh, a little over that. Uh, for the released measurement, we'll apply the brakes. And we go to about 12 and 5 eighths. All right, so we got about an inch and a half of travel well under the two and a half inches that were allowed for a long stroke brake chamber. So this side's good, uh, but this side, as you can see, and you can just take a visual look here. You don't even need a tape measure. You can see this, this crazy uh, acute angle right here um, showing you that this push rod is uh, pushing out too far. There's another indicator. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a good shot of it, but there is an orange mark uh, this one's kind of worn off, but at the end of each push rod on a brake chamber is an orange mark. Indicating the end of push rod travel. So if you ever look underneath this brake chamber bracket and you can see orange there, that's never good. Applied, released, anything, you should never see that orange mark on there. That means that the push rod is as far as it's going to go. And once you run out of push rod travel, you run out of brakes and in fact I think this is pushed out so far yeah these brakes are still released right now these I can still move them so this brake is currently not doing anything it's ineffective all right so now we're actually gonna test out the slack adjuster we're gonna start on the side that is working so I can show you uh, what should happen with a uh, correctly working slack adjuster and then we'll hop over here to the bad side and we'll show you why we uh, failed the slack adjuster all right, so we're gonna start off by backing off the brake because the slack adjuster only makes adjustments when it senses excessive brake stroke. Um, so right now everything's good with this, so we're gonna back off the brake. You don't have to go nuts, maybe two full turns, a full turn, uh, but you gotta back it off enough for it to be able to sense the uh, excessive brake stroke, and then the uh, slack adjuster should start making adjustments. Wait. All right, so what we're gonna do then is put a wrench on here and I'm gonna start at the six o'clock position and I'm gonna apply and release service brake applications. And if this slack adjuster is working correctly, we should eventually see this thing start to move. Uh, and what's happening there is the mechanism is sensing that excessive slack and it's rotating this uh, S-cam around to make the brakes come closer to the drums. So we'll make a series of brake applications here. It might take a little while. The further the brake is out, the bigger the, the movement it'll make, and then as it gets closer and closer to its uh, desired uh, clearance, uh, the movements will get slower. All right, here we go.
You can see it takes a little while, but the wrench started at the six o'clock position. You see now it's approaching the nine o'clock. This is an older slack adjuster, so it's probably not as uh, not as brand new as uh, some of the other ones that we'll see here. And uh, the newer ones make the adjustments quicker, but it's still adjusting the brake and uh, maintaining that uh, brake to drum clearance that we want. All right, now we're gonna try the same thing on the slacker adjuster that we know is defective. Uh, you can see the, the bit, I don't have to back the brake off at all because you can see the huge amount of clearance between the lining and the drum. Uh, we're gonna do the same test. Throw a wrench on there, put it on the six o'clock position, and if the slack adjuster is working correctly, we should see this do the same thing the other one did, start moving clockwise and start taking up the slack from uh, uh, the distance between the lining and the drum. As you can see, this adjuster isn't moving. This stayed at the six o'clock position. There is excessive uh, clearance here between the lining and the drum and it's not uh, adjusting that clearance or that slack. So uh, slack adjuster's gotta go. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the actual slack adjuster replacement. Start off by taking this cotter pin out of the clevis pin. A lot of times these pins get seized inside the clevis. Sometimes you can get an air hammer and knock them out. Other times you kind of drill them out or cut off the clevis. All right. Look at the clevis pin for wear. Uh, you also want to check the clevis afterwards. All right, now you get the clevis pin out. You can rotate the slack adjuster out of the clevis using the adjuster. Slack adjuster's out of the clevis. Now we're gonna pull this snap ring off. Set that aside. There could be one, two, or three uh, spacer washers in here in order to align the slack adjuster to the, to the uh, clevis. You never want that super tight. You want at least like a 16th of an inch play back and forth. Right. Luckily the slack adjuster came out all right. Uh, sometimes they get seized on there. They make special pullers to pull off the slack adjusters. Other times, uh, you gotta cut it off. All right, so we're gonna clean off this old grease uh, and prep it for the new slack adjuster. All right, we got it cleaned up. With the slack adjuster off, it's a good time to check out this S-cam bushing right here. This is the Hendrickson tube style, so what you're seeing right here isn't the actual S-cam. This is the tube holding the bushing. But if you grab on this end here and kind of push up and down, you can see, and that's not bad at all. Hendrickson, I believe, uh, recommends replacing after 60 thousandths uh, inches of uh, movement. Uh, you can get a dial indicator on these or on the head of that to kind of see if uh, they're bad. but. Uh, I can tell you from experience that's nowhere near 60,000, it's probably like 20,000 and that's not too bad. Alright, we're going to be putting some Never Seize on the S-cam splines. So the next guy that takes off the slack adjuster doesn't have to use the puller. Cursing my name.
We get in there between all the splines. All right, now we can take our new slack adjuster. Now our new slack adjuster is a Haldex. Well, it's a Haldex style. Uh, it's actually Propar, but it's slightly different. If you notice, this one has this little notch right here, and this one doesn't. All right, so this one is a normal Haldex slack adjuster, and this is a Haldex self-setting slack adjuster. The difference between the two is one has this installation indicator and the other one doesn't. The reason why it matters is when I install this one, I have to loosen up this anchor bar and push this when I have it on the S cam or when I have it on the uh, S cam shaft, push this away from the adjuster this way until it becomes an, until it comes to an internal stop, and then I tighten up the anchor bar uh, nut. On this self-setting slack adjuster, this can be in any position whatsoever. They recommend they're all in some uniform position that way. Uh, you can easily look at something and tell if something's off. But on these self-setting slack adjusters, the one without the installation indicator, this uh, arm can be at any position. But it matters on this style. So we install this style. I'm going to loosen up the nut on the back side here. And I'm going to, once I get it on the S-cam, I'm going to push this away from the adjuster nut as far as it goes until it comes to an internal stop and then I'm gonna tighten up the anchor bar nut. All right, we got our anchor bar nut loose, so this is free to move. Slide our slack adjuster onto the S cam. We're not worried about trying to get this into the clevis. We'll use the adjuster to bring the slack adjuster into the clevis after we get this lined up. <laughs> All right, so we got uh, our anchor bar into the slot here. So again, we're gonna get everything hooked up, but then again, before we tighten this nut up, we're gonna push this all the way till it become till it comes to an internal stop and again this pointer right here should fall within the notch when it's when it's good to go all right so got that on we'll grab our spacer washers <coughs> put these on and you can see that'll give us about a sixteenth of an inch play Get our snap ring back on Run that around a little bit and make sure the snap rings in there. You don't want that falling off. All right. Now we're gonna rotate our uh, adjusting nut to bring the slack adjuster to the clevis. When you go to tighten this thing up, it should line right up. You should never have to push up on a push rod or push down or pull out on it. Uh, if it doesn't line up, something's wrong. Make sure your brakes are still released. Uh, make sure you got the right size slack adjuster. Um, all right, so we got that. We're gonna put on a new clevis and a new cotter pin. Before you put the clevis on, make sure you put some never sees on that. cotter pin in there all right now that we got our cotter pin in there now we can push our adjusting arm oh, you can see it's actually right where it's supposed to be now after I tighten the brake down but we're still gonna push this all the way till it comes to a stop and then uh, tighten down our nut. All right, so we're just gonna push this. Make sure the slack adjuster doesn't move. So as long as this notch is in, or rather this pointer is within that notch, 
you can tighten down the anchor bar. If it's not in there and you tighten this thing down, you can end up with tight brakes. All right, now we got the slacker duster back on. We got our clevis on there. We're gonna pump this full of grease. We're gonna add some grease to our S cam bushings. And then we're gonna adjust our brakes back down and recheck our brake stroke, make sure everything's okay. There we got some grease exiting. Some in our S cam bushings. All right, so now we're gonna adjust the brakes back down. You can see we're far away from the drums there. tighten it up until the brakes contact the drum and then we're gonna back it off a half turn now that half turn is just a general guideline to achieve the right free play you want three eighths to five eighths of an inch free play so that same kind of measurement we took on uh, the brake stroke uh, you can take the same kind of measurement for free play if you put a tape measure in here and measure from where it's at right now to where it's at when you pull on the the brakes so basically how far the the brake has to travel to hit that drum um, you can check that free play. So that, that free play is 3 eighths to 5 eighths of an inch right here. And we'll check that after we back the brakes off. All right, back the brakes off a half turn. All right, see our brakes are released. And we're just gonna, you don't have to get a tape measure in there. You can eyeball it, but we're just gonna grab the, the push rod and the slack adjuster. Let's say there's probably a half inch of movement there. So that's good. You don't want it too tight. You don't want it under three eighths of an inch because then you're probably got a tight brake and you don't want it over five eighths of an inch. If I would have done it a full turn off instead of a half turn, um, you know, we could have excessive brake stroke. It's got to take up that, that distance um, before the brakes start contacting the drum. All right, so the brakes are adjusted down. We're going to check the brake stroke. Brakes released, we got about 11 and a quarter again. All right, we're gonna apply service brakes. All right, we got about 12 and 5 eighths. So we got a uh, inch and 3 eighths brake travel. Well under the two and a half that were allowed for a long stroke brake chamber. So we're all good.